This is Twit. You might think of, you know, the net, uh, the rise of the internet and the ARPANET, the internet and the web as one, uh, uh, you know, uh, point on, on a triangle. Um, and online services, you know, uh, CompuServe, Prodigy, AOL, um, there were, and, and even the bulletin board systems as another point. And that's all we've had all these years. You know, um, what's been missing is the third point, which is the Plato story. Mm -hmm. And I think by having all three, we get a very different perspective on this journey that humanity has been on for, for a very short time. I mean, we're only talking about, you know, roughly 40, 50 years um, that's completely changed the world. Uh, it's changed, you know, you read stuff about how the internet now is changing how people think. It'll probably wind up that we're, our DNA is being changed, you know, um, certainly, uh, you know, uh, just how we think about things and process information. I don't think uh, previous generations were ever exposed to the torrent of information that we get now. Not all good, and not all reliable. And that's a, that's a new skill that we all have to develop uh, to try to, you know, filter out stuff. But um, so, yeah, I, I, I view Plato as one of the fundamental, you know, uh, uh, points in, uh, on this triangle of, of uh, the history of the online or the networked community, you might think about it that way, you know. And um, uh, I think you would be really surprised to see how much of uh, things had, had developed to an advanced state on Plato um, before, you know, the personal computers started. I, I, I often um, describe the situation as, you know, with Plato, what you got was um, the rise of the interpersonal computer revolution before the personal computer revolution even started. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of heresy in the world of Silicon Valley. You know, and there's even books that have just come out about the history of Silicon Valley that are wonderful, but uh, I doubt you're going to hear about Plato in them, um, largely because Plato happened, uh, you know, over a thousand miles to the east out in the cornfields of Illinois. Um, but what they pulled off in Illinois is really remarkable. I mean, uh, uh, and, and particularly because it was mostly that all the social stuff that we're talking about, the, the, the everything from chat rooms, instant messaging, message forums, multiplayer games with graphics, um, you know, screen sharing, an online newspaper that was crowdsourced even um, in 1974. Um, a lot of this was almost all of these social things came about as what you would call apps today, developed by teenagers who were just kids in the uh the, the surrounding area around um, the University of Illinois, mostly from high schools. Uh, some were had graduated from high school and gone to the U of I as, as undergraduate students, but we're talking about teenagers. And they wrote almost all of this code. And um, the system itself was, was supposed to be about delivering education, interactive lessons, you know, uh, e-learning and online lessons in any subject imaginable. Um, and that was always the mission of Plato. But suddenly the kids said, like, whoa, wait a minute, um, we, we can add all kinds of capabilities to this thing and make it fun for people to just yak with each other online. And that's exactly what they did. And um, so very, very quickly, you had a microcosm of everything you would see starting like in the 90s and beyond um, today, you know, up to today. Um, and also the same issues you had, you know people stalking each other online. You had people impersonating each other. You had uh, guys going into chat rooms and pretending they were girls, you know, to, to, to just troll people. Um, you had, you know, every single aspect just at a smaller level. And of course, what was missing was the monetary um, incentive. There wasn't a gold rush kind of mentality the way you have on the internet now where everybody can be a dot-com millionaire and all that kind of stuff. That hadn't come about yet and wouldn't come about for another generation. So um, you didn't have spam, you didn't have advertising, um, but you did have pure uh, connection between people. And um, that was a real thrill to people who knew about the system. If you didn't know about the system um, and you encountered someone who had used Play-Doh, 
you know, they, they would be like these bright eyed, you know, uh, I have seen the future. Why, why aren't you coming on board with me kind of folks? And um, it made for some very interesting conversations. And especially at dinner, you know, like around the family dinner table, um, that sort of thing, because uh, most people, the, the whole idea of, you know, hey, I chatted with people in Hawaii today. You know, most people would say like, gosh, that must have cost a fortune for the long distance phone call. And you're like, no, 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 no. This was an online chat and, and they would not understand. So all of these fundamental things that we take for granted today were just going right over the heads, you know, of most people um, in the 70s and, and well into the 80s.